everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on Phase 2 Dose Finding Studies with MCP and Modeling Techniques. I would now like to introduce Pantelis Vlahos, Principal Strategic Consultant at Cytel. Great. Uh, thank you, Alisa, and thank you, everybody, for once again joining <coughs> this webinar series. This is the third uh, out of a series of five webinars that we are conducting to orient and uh, make yourselves familiar with some of the features uh, of EAST. Uh, as you might remember, for those of you who were present in the previous two weeks, we started with uh, an overview of uh, multiple R, multiple stage designs. Um, and we followed that up with uh, early phase dose escalation uh, using um, different techniques. Uh, our emphasis was uh, on model-based uh, Bayesian approaches. So today we're going to move into the phase two arena and to the uh, place where we want to uh, pick uh, the best dose to move forward uh, to phase three. And um, we're going to explore that through the use of the MCP mod methodology. So without further ado, uh, let me go uh, into the presentation. Uh, as in the previous times, I will be toggling between the presentation and uh, a live demo uh, of EAST, where I'm going to be illustrating uh, some of the functionality that uh, I will cover on the slides. So this is our agenda for today. I'm going to give you a brief introduction into the methodology. We're going to go into a case study. Um, this is a methodology that is geared towards both the design as well as the analysis of data using MCP mod. Uh, so actually, I'm going to be illustrating a couple of different uh, case studies, one for the design, one for the analysis, and uh, hopefully we're going to have uh, quite some time to uh, go through questions um, at the end of, the, um, of, of this presentation. So once again, this is the, the modular structure of the software. We have covered so far the MAMS uh, module, we have covered the Escalate module, and uh, the program module. And today, we're going to be focusing on MCP mod. Um, as you can see in the, this flash screen, it's a design which improves the efficiency of identifying a, a more effective dose to carry into uh, phase three. Uh, and it's based on a combination of model, multiple comparison procedures as well as modeling approaches for fitting uh, a dose response. Um, we are uh, we have, besides the EAST version, we also have uh, a SAS PROC version, which is only geared towards the analysis of such uh, studies. Uh, if you are interested in that, please let us know, and we'll be more than happy to provide you with more information about it. So let's get into the methodology. This methodology uh, is geared towards um, studies um, for determining uh, a proof of concept, as well as a dose finding signal. So in the proof of concept, we want to see how a change in the dose level leads to a desirable change in the endpoint of interest, while the dose finding step uh, is one where we select one or more appropriate dose levels uh, to pass into a confirmatory phase three study once we have established uh, the proof of concept. MCP mode is a methodology that tries to combine uh, these two uh, stages. Traditionally, um, Proof of concept is conducted using multiple multiple uh, active arms and placebo. Uh, to select the target dose, um, you select the dose level that is statistically significant at the proof of concept stage, and it's also the smallest of the statistical significant doses, uh, which is also clinically relevant. The dose response, response modeling part happens at the later stage, not the design stage. So in that case, you use data that were became available from the proof of concept or maybe earlier trials that you might have, and you try to find a statistical model which captures the effects of the target dose on the dose response. So it is a straightforward approach. Um, there's, we have to concede that, but it has some drawbacks. It tends to concentrate the range of doses studied to a narrow range which is typically where the sponsors have faith that they will detect um, a dose signal. The dose response model itself um, should play a greater role in choosing the right dose, and it actually should happen uh, at the design stage. So using the dose response modeling in the design stage as well um, brings uh, in as, as early as 
possible in the process, uh, instead of the traditional approach which focuses on the modeling uh, at the very end uh, of the process. So with the MCP mod uh, methodology, it, it comprises of two parts. Uh, one is the MCP part, which you might view those as a quantita qualitative factor, and then you try to make inference about the target dose when you restrict yourself to a discrete set of doses used in the study. And the mod part, which tries to model the dose response relationships through a parametric functional form. There, dose is treated as a quantitative factor, and the validity of the modeling approach depends on the pre specification of an appropriate or more than one appropriate uh, dose response models. So, the combination of these two brings us to the MCP mod. There is an MCP step where you try to establish this dose response signal using multiple comparison procedures. And there is a mod step where you try to estimate the dose response curve as well as the target doses of interest using modeling techniques of nonlinear regression. Modeling is also pre specified at the design stage, as I mentioned uh, in the previous slide, because that way, what you try to you manage to do is to account for uncertainty in the dose response model via a set of candidate dose response model and try to do that as early as possible. And what we do is we use model selection or model average techniques to combine uh, different models. So you might use an AIC or a BIC criteria to select among the existing models, or you might decide to average out uh, over the existing models uh, that you have. So schematically, this is what the MCP mod uh, procedure looks like. So at the design stage, we identify uh, several candidate dose response shapes, which you might see here on the right, which are likely to represent the true underlying dose response relationship. Then, uh, as the second step of the design part, we derive optimal contrast coefficients in such a way such that the marginal power to detect the specific dose response is going to be maximized. We then move into the analysis part, where we evaluate the significance of the individual shapes um, in terms of a multiple contrast test uh, to assess whether a dose response signal uh, can be detected. In the fourth part, we select the candidate model using the uh, aforementioned uh, model selection techniques, which could be IIC, BIC, or model averaging. And finally, the model that we chose, or the average model, will be used to produce inference on the adequate doses. This is actually also uh, what we call the mod part uh, of the analysis. So schematically, this is what the procedure involves. Uh, mathematically, we have to specify a model for the Ys. We actually have to specify n many candidate models for the Ys. Uh, we want to test simultaneously all null hypotheses, and we do that with uh, a T statistic, uh, which under the null has a central T, under the alternative obviously has a non-central T. Uh, and then the, the decision is going to be based on the maximum uh, of that T statistic and uh, an appropriate threshold, which is chosen to control uh, the family-wise error rate. So this is the, the process uh, in a nutshell. Uh, the, the, Form of the different dose response models that uh, we uh, invoke in this process is the one that you is seeing here on the screen. Uh, we have their parametric form as well as sort of like a standardized form uh, of these. So you can enter both um, if needed in the software. And um, the scope taken from um, a presentation that one of the uh, authors of the original MCP mod procedure, Georg Bornkamp, uh, has made is to, um, in the development phase, to uh, produce uh, phase two dose response studies to support the selection of the appropriate dose to move into a phase three. We can um, entertain different types uh, of responses. Uh, in this version of EAST, we can actually entertain continuous binary and count type of data. Uh, time to event is something that we're working on. Um, and in terms of recommendations, we need to have at least uh, two active doses for the MCP step or three active doses for the mod step. A rule of thumb is that you typically need to have four to seven active doses and at least a tenfold 
uh, dose range. So the, the ratio uh, of the um, largest to the smallest dose uh, needs to be about 10. Uh, and the, this process makes more sense when there is also a placebo control into the study. So these are sort of like the, the general recommendations for the process. This is a, a procedure that has been noticed by the regulators as well. Uh, both the European as well as the US side have offered uh, positive opinions about it. Uh, in the European end, uh, this, the first opinion uh, was issued in 2012, uh, and since then there were 12 additional qualification opinions uh, that were uh, offered. MCP mod was the first such statistically uh, statistical methodology that was qualified. While in the US front, the FDA issued its fit for purpose designation uh, to the MCP mod procedure for guiding uh, the dose selection uh, for phase three testing. So it is a procedure that has received uh, considerable notice from the regulators as well, as well as um, a positive view about it. So let's move now into case studies. I'm going to be illustrating the design as well as the analysis capabilities uh, of the software uh, with two different uh, case studies. Uh, the first one is uh, the biome study um, for uh, uh, irritable bowel syndrome. It's a randomized double blind uh, parallel group trial with patients being allocated into either placebo or one of four active dose levels, which are currently coded uh, with the numbers that you see uh, on the screen in terms of their dosage. Um, in terms of the response variable, we have baseline adjusted abdominal pain score, where the larger values of this score correspond to a better uh, treatment effect. So let's move into the design part, and actually uh, it's, it is best that we see this through um, a demonstration of these. So the MCP mod techniques in these can be found, as I mentioned, both for continuous as well as binomial and also count uh, type of data, Poisson negative binomial, under uh, the many samples um, uh, menu option. So under that option, you can select at the bottom of that list the MCP mod procedure to design a study uh, using uh, this approach. I have already um, designed one, which I'm going to be bringing up uh, onto your screen. And just to illustrate sort of like the, the type of inputs that you have to, to put in. So we have the test parameter uh, tab, uh, where you specify the number of active doses in addition uh, to control, placebo, the type one error that you need to put, and then uh, the sample size that you want to explore. Again, just as most um, sample size power uh, calculating procedures, this procedure can go both ways. So you can either specify a sample size and see what that buys you in terms of power, or you can specify the uh, desired power and see um, how, much, how, many sam how many subjects you would need to recruit in order to achieve that. So in this particular case, we're initially going to try and see what a sample of size 100 is going to buy us. Um, and we also need to see how we can summarize the power function. So this can be done either in terms of the model that will give you the smallest of the powers uh, among the possible uh, range of models that you have, the maximum uh, power, or an average power, the mean power that you have. So we also have to specify uh, the variability of uh, your responses in the different dose levels. In this case, we assume that we have a common variability of one. In the next step, we have to specify the candidate models that we will be entertaining. And um, this can be done here. You, you can select among all the different models that they showed you in the presentation from Emacs, sigmoid Emacs, linear, linear in log dose, quadratic, exponential data and logistic type of models, where you would have to specify what the maximum effect is, what the placebo effect is, and depending on the model, you have to specify either the ED50 or a shift parameter uh, of a particular model for the logistic. There are models that would require just the placebo effect and the maximum effect, much like the linear model. So as soon as you specify the particular model, you can click on the Add Model button, and this will add it to the existing list 
of models that you will be entertaining. So in this case, um, I have examined uh, a couple of different Emacs models, a linear model, a beta model, and a couple of different logistic models. So these were the, the different types of models that I have added. Once you add these models into your, uh, into your uh, table, then you can also uh, visualize them just to see what sort of dose response curves uh, you're envisioning uh, which would have to contain sort of like a certain variety of curves, others that achieve um, uh, the maximum towards the end of the dose levels, some that achieve it uh, almost instantaneously, different steepnesses of curves, and so forth. So it would be good to explore uh, a variety of curves uh, in this step. As soon as you do that, then the, the last piece that you need to specify is how you're going to be allocating subjects into the different dose levels and placebo. You can have equal allocation, which you can specify through the user-defined um, allocations, where you might, might say that uh, for five dose levels, 20% uh, of the subjects are going to be allocated in each dose level. So here, for the sample of size 100, we would expect about 20 subjects uh, in each of the dose levels. Or you might have an optimized allocation, uh, which uh, can use any one of the three optimality criteria that we have, the optimality criterion, target dose criterion, and a combination of the two, um, where pretty much they, they try to minimize some sort of like a, uh, within uh, some of some of squares. So in this situation, we are going to go um, just for an illustration with a user-defined allocation. So we're gonna be assuming equal allocation in each one of the dose levels. And then we can click uh, on the compute to get an idea about um, the, the design that we have. So the first thing that you can see is that these 100 subjects which have, equal, have been equally allocated to uh, the five dose levels will buy you about 36.5% power, okay? so you're nowhere near enough uh, to what you need. Um, the other things that you would, uh, would be listed is what each one of the different models that you specified gets you in terms of power. So you can see, for example, that uh, the first Emax model, the, the beta model has the smallest power, which is 27.4%. So if I were using the minimum power summary function, this is what I would be reporting. Um, while the uh, logistic, one of the logistic um, functions that I specified gives us the highest possible power, which is 45.1%. So if I were to use the maximum uh, power function uh, summary, I would get 45.1%. Here we have used the mean, uh, the average, and pretty much we are getting an average of the, the, the powers that have been reported. We also have what the mean response is for each one of the dose levels and for each one of the models that we have entertained. And the contrast matrix, which uh, I, uh, I referred to on the slide, the optimal contrast coefficients, which uh, have been determined such that the, that the marginal power to detect the specific dose response is maximized, is also listed here. So we have for each one of the curves what the contrast matrix is going to be as well as what the correlation coefficient matrix between uh, the different uh, contrasts is going to be. And this is pretty much the output that we would get uh, out of the design part of, of the study. If I were to um, select um, the power uh, option and see how many samples I would need in order to get 90% uh, power, then you would see that we would require a total of 467 subjects. So basically about 93 to 94 per um, treatment R. So that would cover the, the first part, which is the design part uh, of the study, um, which gives you an idea of how large a study you need to run in order uh, to meet uh, the operating characteristics of your choice. So in the slide that you will receive after this, after this uh, webinar, uh, I have included uh, pretty much a summary of each one of the steps uh, that I followed here, in addition to the different types of outputs uh, that are available. So let's move now into the analysis part. 
So the analysis part will be illustrated uh, by a trial in the area of schizophrenia. Um, this is uh, a balanced design. We had a total of 240 subjects, which were randomly allocated to each one of uh, three experimental arms and placebo. So the three experimental arms were the low dose of our drug, medium dose, and a high dose. And the primary endpoint was a change from baseline in the positive and negative syndrome scale, the PAN score, uh, to week four. So a low value is a beneficial effect, although here we're actually going to be reporting the improvement. So we want the higher improvement the possible. So that's what the data that we have. Uh, we are looking at a type 1 error of 0.025 and a one-sided uh, test. And a little bit few more information about the data that you will see me entering into the software. Uh, we have, as I mentioned, 240 rows of data. We have the subject ID, each one of the four dose levels, and the improvement, the reduction from baseline to week four um, of uh, in the PAM score. We also have the, the, the PAM score at baseline, and the patient's gender has also been reported, since you also have the possibility to enter information um, in terms of covariates. So let's get um, into uh, to see the data. So this is what our data looks like here. You can see the information, the various pieces of information that we have. Uh, subject ID, gender, the baseline value, as well as the improvement score. And if I were to initially get an idea about um, whether there is uh, a dose response uh, in this uh, data set, I could go on the analysis tab uh, of ETH, and then I could uh, try and uh, select uh, a summary plot, which, sorry, uh, a continuous plot, uh, which would be um, a box plot of uh, the response variable. So I would put in, um, in my categories uh, the dose levels, the different dose levels that I have, and the improvement in the variable axis, and I would put create a side-by-side -side box plot as the one that you see here on the screen, which shows you essentially that uh, if you look at the median uh, value of the box, that there seems to be a slight increase in that value as we move from the placebo to the different uh, dose levels. So there seems to be uh, some sort of a dose response here, but we want to see what we can detect with the actual uh, procedure itself. So I still have the data loaded into EAST, the case one data. And what I will have to do is now um, focus on the analysis tab and go in the corresponding area to the one that I had gone on the design tab. So I would go under the many samples option to select uh, the MCP mod procedure. I could do that either for binomial or for count data as well. So if I do that, I will be presented with this input screen where I can specify the dose level, I can specify my response, which in this case is improvement, and I can click on next uh, to get my analysis input screens. So in this analysis input screen, I can specify a few different things. Uh, first of all, uh, the alpha level that you're gonna be using, as you will see, the, the software has already detected the different dose levels that we have from zero to 120. Uh, we can test the models using a p-value, adjusted p-values using uh, the Dunnett procedure. Uh, and we're gonna be keeping the models that have an adjusted p-value less than 0.025. So those are gonna be the significant models. Uh, among the models that make the cuts, we're gonna be selecting uh, using either the AIC criterion, the maximum T statistic, or we can also use an average AIC criterion to um, facilitate model averaging. And then you have to specify uh, for the uh, dose selection part, um, a criterion which is either going to be a target dose when you want to be within a delta uh, over placebo. So in this case, uh, the delta, uh, that was clinically meaningful was uh, five units, or you could also have a criteria based on an effective dose where you want to be within a certain percentage of the maximum effect uh, over placebo. So here I will select uh, a delta of five, 
And then I would go into the candidate models um, area to enter different candidate models that I want uh, to specify as well. So in, in my case, what I have is that the placebo effect is about uh, 0.75, the maximum effect is one, and I will uh, illustrate four different models. So I will illustrate an Emacs model with uh, an ED50 over 100. I will illustrate a linear model, uh, again with the same minimum uh, placebo and maximum effect. I will illustrate a linear model in uh, the log scale for the dose. I will add that into my list. And the final model that we'll be considering is an exponential model, just for illustration, with uh, a delta of 100. So I'm gonna add that model as well in there. You can see that there was already a model that was uh, pre-selected by default. Uh, it's not a model that I wanna entertain, so I'm just gonna select that row and I'm gonna delete it from the list of possible rows that I have. And now these are the four models that I'm going to be entertaining. I can click on the uh, graph icon just to see what are the different types of curves uh, that I'm considering. And you can see here uh, how they vary from uh, the linear in log dose up to the other extreme, which is the exponential uh, model. So now that I have done that, I can click on OK, and this will essentially run the MCP mod procedure. And the type of output that we'll get is the one that you see here uh, on the screen. So initially we'll have a dose-wise summary, what is the mean, median, and standard deviation of the response in each one of the dose levels. So this is uh, descriptive statistics. Uh, what are What is again the optimal contrast matrix based on the four models that we specified? calculated in the same way that you would calculate it, for example, in the design case, as well as the, the correlation matrix of these contrasts. And then you go into the part where you would be running the multiple contrast test. So you want to identify which models are significant at the 0.025 uh, level. And as you can see here, what is reported is the adjusted p-value. And among these four models that I selected, you can see that only the Emax model, as well as the linear model, are the ones that have an adjusted p-value less than 0.025. The other models uh, ex uh, exceed that. The exponential brief by a little, but it exceeds it. So the software itself will um, calculate, of course, the, um, the, the model components, the estimates for each one of the four models. But when you um, go down into the model selection, it will only be basing the model selection on the models that made the cut in terms of the adjusted p-value. So in the model selection part, you'll see that the AIC is reported for these two winner models, for the Emacs and the linear model, and the smallest such AIC corresponds to the linear model, which would appear here to be the selected one, as you can see that it's mentioned as well in the process. So uh, based on that linear model, we will be estimating our target dose. Among the possible list of dose levels that we have, the one that gets uh, selected um, is the 120 milligram dose level. But since this is a continuous dose response relationship, you would also get what the best estimate is going to be in a continuous scale. So you can see that the linear model would estimate 108.6 milligrams, the Emax model will estimate 100.2 milligrams. So there, there seems to be a discrepancy between the two, although in terms of the fixed discrete dose levels, they, they pick uh, the same dose level. So what I could actually do is I could go back to the inputs of my analysis and I could say, well, um, there seems to be a discrepancy um, between the two. What I wanna do is I want to actually perform some model averaging. So I'm gonna be using the average AIC criterion. And now if I go back to the output you, and I scroll further down, you will see that I still get the same type of output that I had before. But now you also have the model average version of the target dose, which is 106.18. Uh, uh, okay, so it is in between the uh, the target doses in the continuous scale that each one uh, of the two procedures uh, ended up um, 
pretty important. So going back to my presentation, uh, to close it off, once again, uh, the slides will contain um, a step-by-step -step instruction of uh, how we did things and how we performed also uh, the model averaging uh, strategy. Um, these are the references that um, the, our, the technique uh, is based on, as well as uh, the qualification option uh, of the EMA. The corresponding reference for the FDA was already uh, in the slides. And um, what I would also like to offer are sort of like uh, the conclusions uh, before uh, I go to thank you. Um, so the, the pairwise test, um, tend to be underpowered in these phase two trials and it's recommended to use contracts-based tests instead, which is what uh, this procedure is being used. So the MCP mod procedure was introduced as an extension of multiple such contrast tests. It simultaneously addresses the goals of hypothesis testing and estimation in those finding trials, and it improves the efficiency of identifying uh, a more uh, efficient dose level. So with that, um, I would like to thank you uh, for attending uh, this presentation, and I will pass um, the uh, baton uh, to uh, 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 to Alyssa, who uh, can give you a little bit more information until we gather uh, the questions from the audience, uh, which um, hopefully we're going to be able to entertain them all. Thank you, Pantelis. Before we move on to the Q&A portion of this webinar, we want to take a moment to remind you that EAST gives you access to a wide selection of trusted, fixed, and adaptive trial designs. EAST is used by nearly every major pharmaceutical company and the FDA. With a broad selection of popular designs in an easy-to-use format, we can help you quickly create and compare trial designs. Our company also offers a range of services from staff that act as an extension of your team and consulting services for more cutting edge products projects to our new real world analytics capabilities. We are here to help support your objectives. Thank you, Lisa. So we can now go into the uh, Q&A session and I'll be more than happy to entertain any questions that you have. And while we're waiting, uh, one thing that I, I can mention is that if you are familiar uh, with uh, e-software. Um, this is probably uh, the only module which currently does not have um, simulation capabilities. So this is something that we are uh, working on because obviously one of the things that you want to do is when you want to simulate um, the uh, performance characteristics of um, MCP mod. And the other thing that I wanted to mention, which is uh, I also, I think, touched upon in the beginning, is that um, for those of you who are in companies where SAS is the primary um, tool for the analysis of data and for incorporating its output in your reports, uh, we have created uh, uh, a procedure, a PROC MCP mod, which will be able to uh, run essentially the analysis part. So the latter part that I covered in the second case study uh, can be done um, uh, entirely in SAS. Um, and we would be more than happy if you have uh, any questions to illustrate, uh, to set up an appointment and illustrate those capabilities on the software as well. Thank you, Pantelis. Um, so we have a, a couple of questions here. How is the performance of MCP mod compared with the trend test? Um, well, this is not something that uh, we are able to, to test directly uh, on, on East, but uh, this is something that was mentioned also in the uh, qualification opinion of uh, in the sorry in the right in the qualification opinion of the uh, VFDA uh, and I think in the SCHMP as well, uh, where they uh, mentioned well they, they went through the different uh, characteristics of the methods from multiplicity. Uh, adjustments uh, to uh, its performance. And as in most such cases, it is a case by case uh, situation, but in uh, in most of the uh, cases that were tested, I think it compared uh, really favorable. And the one thing, of course, that it has going for itself is, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the part that you are considering at the very early stage, uh, the modeling part. 
instead of having uh, to wait until the end and only concentrate in models that you would think um, where the signal would be probably on the later ranges of your, uh, on the upper ranges of your uh, dose levels. All right, our, our next question here. Can we use East MCP mod without a placebo arm? Could our lowest dose be treated as a placebo even if it isn't zero? So for example, uh, if we can't have a placebo and we want to look at doses of 10, 20, 40, 80. Yes, uh, you, you, you can do this, but you, you, you will be made, yes, of course. So one, for the, for the purposes of the nomenclature of the software, one may, one of these dose levels is going to be tagged for the software as a placebo, but it doesn't have to be the placebo in, in your case. So, um, but um, this is something that you, you can, of course, do, yes. Because it's going to be one of the one of the dose levels that you have, hope, well, probably the, the smallest or one of the extreme dose levels. Um, but you'll have to, when you enter in the information about the different uh, models that you want to entertain, you will also need to have some idea about what the effect of that uh, lowest dose level is going to be, because this is part of the input. Thank you. And another question here. Since power is conditional on assumed effects, does it help to look at power in a proof of concepts? Um, well, this is um, not a theory, but I think it's, it's, a, it's a question which is uh, um, open for discussion. Um, obviously, what you want to do, especially in a, in a phase uh, two study, um, you want to have at least typically 80% um, uh, power. So uh, since this is an approach that combines the, the dose finding part as well as the, the proof of concept, and you want you you're going to be using one sample um, one sample size to achieve both then you you need to consider power as well if you were looking just at the proof of concept step alone then i agree probably not but since there is also the the dose finding aspect here um, to select the dose level that you're going to be moving on to the um, uh, phase 3 then you have to entertain that. We, uh, we actually right. have a follow-up question. Um, can proof of concept be used for the uh, modeling part? Uh, I'm not sure that I understand this part. So the, the modeling part, right, so the uh, that part is done early in the process, right? So the modeling part will help you at the design stage to decide uh, on the the models that are likely to represent the true dose response uh, relationship, so uh, it does it does happen already um, at the early stage. Oh, I see. We have a clarification on yeah. that question. Um, it's can probability of success be used for the modeling part? Apologies, Pantelis. Um well, probability of success, you're going to be, uh, one could think about sort of like the, what we're reporting here is uh, the average power uh, over the different models. We're reporting the minimum and the maximum. So one could think that the average power that we're reporting is already one part, one kind of a probability of success. Because typically in the probability of success, if you think about it even in a Bayesian way, you have your you know, treatment effect and you try to uh, place weights on different parts of that treatment effect and then average out uh, with respect to uh, this a priori distribution. So in a sense, this is happening, but uh, it would be actually uh, pretty interesting um, to, to consider a modification of the procedure, which will actually uh, give you different types uh, of uh, different reports for the probability of success. I know that um, uh, Larry Gould uh, has worked on a Bayesian version of the MCP mod procedure, and I think that this is one of the things that uh, it is reporting. But I'll have to make sure about that. 
Thank you, Pantelis, and thank you to everyone for attending today's webinar on phase two dose finding studies with MCP and modeling techniques. Right next week, uh, we'll having um, a webinar on sample size reassessment with time to event endpoints. And the final webinar in a couple of weeks is going to expanding on that notion with the use of adaptive population arrangements. Thank you, Alyssa, and thank you everybody for attending. Thank you all and have a great rest of your day.